All right, good evening, everybody. Um, this is the uh, this is going to be a lecture about the, this week's parasha. We're going to connect it with the story, with actually the story of the redemption that's going to be very soon uh, with the help of God. Uh, this week's parasha. Every week we have a new parasha, Liyain Haram, and this week's parasha is called Vayigash, and he came forward. Who came forward? Um, I hope everybody knows the story of the twelve tribes. Uh, Jacob had twelve sons, and uh, his favorite, as you could say, or maybe, well, you, got, you can't take that word too literally. The rabbis explain how come he he loved Joseph so much, uh, but the Torah says that his favorite was Joseph or Yosef, and the rabbis explained it more deeply. There was a more deeper connection to Jacob and Joseph. The rabbis say anything that happened to Jacob in his life happened to Joseph. And the uh, the brothers were, uh, like say, jealous, or they were, they they knew that from Jacob was supposed to come out the the Jews, and they were they told themselves, how come they thought that since Jacob loved Joseph so much, that Joseph would be the next continuation of the Jewish nation, and they didn't feel that was right. So they took Joseph and they sold him to the Egyptians or to Ishmaelites. Uh, Aravim, Arabs, and these Arabs sold them to Egypt. The story goes on and on, and uh, jo uh, jo Joseph at the end, after I think 13 years, he becomes the highest, the viceroy of Egypt, uh, uh, Pharaoh's second in command. And there was a very big famine, and uh, to the brothers came up to Joseph. They didn't know he was Joseph to get food. They thought he was dead. And um, they didn't recognize him because when they sold Joseph, he was 17 years old. He was a young boy without no beard. And suddenly they see a big man next to them, tall, with a nice beard. And uh, they didn't recognize him. But he recognized them right away. And uh, basically he accuses them of being spies. And he tells them, if you guys aren't spies, bring your... Uh, first he puts them in the dungeon, in the in, in a jail. Puts him there for three days, I think, and, and the third day he comes back and tells them through a interpreter. Of course, this interpreter was his own son, actually Menashe, or Menasse. He tells them because he acted like he didn't know Hebrew, and he tells this bro uh, and he tells them through Menashe, the interpreter, that if you, I'm, I'm, I'm a God-fearing man, if you guys want to go home, and if you guys say that you're not spies, bring your younger brother <clears throat> with you. The youngest boy was B Benjamin, Joseph's. Uh, brother from the father and the mother's side because Jacob had four wives he tells them bring Benjamin with you if you guys are true men you guys aren't real spies and he tells the and the brothers look at, at each other and they're you know they're going crazy how come God is doing this to them they ask themselves and Reuben Reuben gets up and says I told you guys not to hurt the boy he meant Joseph back 13 years ago I told you not to hurt him and now look how God is punishing us because of that. They didn't know that Joseph understood Hebrew. When he heard that, he went to the side and started to cry. But he, then he came back and tells them, if you guys tell you what, one of you guys will stay in jail, because I need to know that you guys will come back. And the rest of you will go up and come back with the younger boy. And who does he pick to go into jail? Simeon, Shimon. When Shimon, or her, when Shimon or when Simeon heard that, he says, I want to know who, the uh, twelve of the tribes were very strong men. The sages say, the Midrash says, they were very, they were supernaturally strong. And Simeon says, I want to know who over here could put me in jail. So Joseph, the Midrash says that Joseph tells, he sends his uh, son to go to Pharaoh and says, I want your seventy strongest men to come and put Simeon in, into the jail. The seventy strong warriors come to put this one man, one man, into jail. When Simeon saw them, he started to roar from fear. It was like a lion roaring. This all 70 men fell on their faces on the ground. Then Joseph turns to his son, Menashe, Menashe and tells him, You put him in jail. Menashe looks, comes up to Simeon from the back and gives him one punch to the back. And he basically knocked the living daylight out of his uncle, really, Shimon. And when Shimon felt this this strength from this boy he tells himself 
this boy can't be that he's there's something going on over here. He already started to feel something fishy because this strength only could come from our family. And he was able to put him into the jail. So basically the, the ten brothers go up, they bring Benjamin back. It's a long story, making it short. And when they bring him back they bring Benjamin, Joseph makes it a way that he puts his he he puts his silver goblet in Benjamin's bag and he accuses him of stealing. So the brothers, they caught them on the way. The brothers bring him back to Egypt. And when they bring him back to Egypt, now when Judah brought Benjamin with him, he swore to his father that he would bring him back. And now Joseph wanted to keep Benjamin as a slave because the punishment for robbery was slave, was being a slave. He was sold into slavery. And when Judah saw this, he started to get very angry. And he was ready to do anything to bring Benjamin back with him to his father. And Joseph sitting there on his throne, his son is on his side, and Judah tells Joseph, he starts to beg him, please bring my father's old this and that. He tries to, you know, the, the not political, but through, how they say, um, not through violence, but through, to talk, diplomacy, he tries to convince Joseph. Joseph doesn't, isn't convinced. When he saw that, he said, it's do or die. I gotta fight this man. Now, gotta put this into perspective. It's 12, it's 11 guys up against Joseph, the viceroy of Egypt. And, you know, imagine how many warriors he has at his disposal. And the uh, rabbi say, when Judah gets, when he, Judah used to get angry, remember, this Judah is the ancestor of King David. Now, it's not for nothing King David was able to beat Goliath. This strength came from his forefather Judah. When uh, they say when Judah used to get angry, he had, there was a couple of signs, like four signs that he would get angry. The first sign, the Midrash says, out of his right eye, blood used to trickle down. The second sign was Judah used to wear five garments. And he had this hair on his chest. When he used to get angry, it used to point and pierce all five garments like a needle. The third sign was he used to, when he used to get angry, he used to take uh, metal chains or metal pieces and he used to grind them with his teeth. When Joseph saw this, that Judah was getting angry, he knew if this man gets angry, he's going to destroy my, he could destroy all of Egypt. This is like a superman. And uh, he tells his son, Menashe, to don't be afraid and show this Judah, the same Menashe who was able to put Simeon in jail. Show this Judah that you got some strength too. We're not some regular guys over here. So he tells, uh, men, and next to his, next to Joseph's throne, there was a, a big, um, not a pillar, but like a, a rock made out of granite. Menashe picks this up with this this granite rock with one hand, throws it up in the air, and with the other hand he he breaks the rock with his fist. Now Judah was also starting to get scared over here. He thought he was dealing with regular soldiers, and he saw this men also have strength. So he tells his brothers. He tells his one of his brothers. His name was Naphtali. He tells him, and he was a very fast runner. He tells him to go through Egypt and check how many gates there are. Naphtali comes back and says there's 12 gates. He tells Judah tells his brothers, I'm myself going to take three gates and all of you guys are going to take the other gates and we're going to all together destroy Egypt. For what? Just so he could bring Benjamin back to his father. And he started to... The, the, the Torah says that Hakol nishma bet paro and the voice was heard in the palace of Pharaoh. What does that mean? The Midrash says that when Judah, he was ready to go to war, literally, he started to roar like a lion. Jacob, he, he said that Judah, when he blessed his sons, he said Judah was a lion. And Judah started to roar like a lion. And when he started to roar, his nephew in Canaan, in Canaan, his name was Hushim, the son of Dan, he also started to roar. And together they made such a loud noise, it was heard all the way in the uh, palace of Pharaoh. Imagine such strength. When and they from this from this roars they said the woman giving birth at that time they all how you say they they all miscarried their children and and the soldiers all in the um in the palace of uh jo in, in the palace of uh, Pharaoh and Joseph their their teeth started knocking back and forth started falling down from fear when Joseph saw that uh, that Judah was ready to go to war and he saw that he couldn't go up against him. He gets up and he says, Ani Yosef, I am Joseph. 
When the brothers heard that, the rabbis say, their souls left their body from shame. The Chafetz Chaim teaches us something very amazing over here. From these words, these two words that Joseph says, Ani Yosef. The Chafetz Chaim says like this. The brothers, when they were, when this whole story, this whole climatic, uh, this whole story that, that, uh, that took place of Joseph from the beginning, from the time they sold Joseph, they had many questions to themselves. They said, how could God make us into uh, accusers of being spies? How could God make this man accusers of being spies, put us in the dungeon? They went through a whole ordeal over here. And they, all, they kept on asking themselves, why did God do this to us? And the answer was given to them in two words. When Joseph got up and said, Ani Yosef, I am Joseph. They understood everything was because God was punishing them because they sold Joseph into slavery. And the same thing is going to be said in the future redemption. You know, throughout our lives, a lot of, we have a tough time. If it's with money, with finding a soulmate, many things we're going to have a tough time. We have tough times with. And sometimes a pe person wants to give up hope. And we have so many questions to God. The Chafetz Chaim says, at the end of the day, when the redemption is going to come, God is going to say, Ani Hashem, I am God. And all our ans all our questions will be answered, just like that. Right now, we may not have the answers to our questions. But just remember, just like the brothers, when they heard Ani Yosef, and it answered all their questions, always remind yourself, when anything, something bad happens, God is going to one day say, in the future, Ani Hashem, I am God. And you're going to understand that everything was for the best. Everything, there was a reason. The rabbis say that there isn't just one Messiah. There are two, actually. One is called the Messiah, the son of Joseph. And one is the Messiah, son of David. And this fight, this ma'avak we call in Hebrew, between Judah and Joseph is the same. It's the rabbis compare it to Mashiach ben David, the Messiah, the son of David, going up against the Messiah, the son of Joseph. And we have to learn, guys, to make peace between them. Because this was the same mistake that Yeravam ben Avat, the, the first king of Israel, that did against Shlomo HaMelech, the son of, the son of uh, King David, King Solomon. Because one was really supposed to be Mashiach ben Yosef, and one was supposed to be Mashiach ben David. We have to learn to make peace between them. And how are going to do that? Ani Yosef. The rabbi speaks Yosef HaTzadik. He was compared to the Yusod. What's the Yusod? Our bodies could be broken down into ten uh, spheres, let's say. The, the brain itself has three. Um, the right, left, and central. The two hands, the body, the two legs, and your the male genitalia. The Yusod, we call it. Joseph was the Yesod. If you want to bring the process of the redemption faster, you got to learn to keep your Yesod clean, to keep it away from the bad stuff, especially if you're Jewish. And in other two parashiyot, we're going to come to the days of Shobavim, we call it. Six weeks, the rabbis say these weeks are specially made to keep up, to repent for this sin of uh, spilling your seed. These six weeks, they're specifically, it's like Rosh Hashanah, for, it's like Yom Kippur. Just made specifically to clean, to repent for these sins. So we all have to take this very seriously and ask Hashem to forgive us, never to do it again. That's the first step. To take upon yourself to stop cold turkey, to get married. The first step is to get married. The second step, actually. And Bezrat Hashem, with this, Hashem will help us reach the full redemption. Amen. Baruch Adonai Amen. Amen.